everyone. I'm so excited that you all came and that, you know, this is a um, topic that's all near and dear to our hearts, right? We all have hormones. We all deal with hormone balance. And um, it's wonderful to be able to share information about it so that we all can be healthier. Um, so my name, before I get started, my name is Sophie Alexander. I'm the lead practitioner here at the Nutritional Wellness Center. And um, I call myself like a holistic practitioner or a clinical nutritionist. My goal is really to help people be healthier and happier without the use of unnecessary drugs or surgery. And um, I want to share a little bit about my background, my story, so those of you who don't work with me or don't know me would know why I'm motivated to be here tonight and talking to you about this important information. Um, but now, you know, now in retrospect, I can look back on my health history and really see, see little signs of when my health story began, and particularly reflecting on hormones and hormonal balance, you know. You know, I got my period at age 11, you know, and that's like on the young side, and it's happening at younger and younger ages. And we can go into a whole conversation about that, but, um, you know, and then, gosh, by early teens, I was having horrible menstrual cramps, like so bad that I was taking these big mitral pills, and they weren't really handling it. Um, and so much so that, like, you know, got put on birth control about age 16 with the whole idea of, oh, it's going to help balance your hormones, right? Um, and I was, I was on that without really kind of any second thought until kind of my mid-20s, until I started to become more educated about what it can mean to be on birth control for long periods of time. Interestingly, along that period of time, late high school into college, I started developing like really bad blood sugar handling issues, terrible stomach aches. Like once I was in college, I would um, eat in the dining hall and then have to lie down for a couple hours just while the pain would pass. Um, as I got, you know, more educated about gut flora balance and things like that, well, how interesting to learn that you know being on birth control can affect the gut flora. And so it, it's just, you know, it's always fun to be able to look back in retrospect, not, you know, while, while you're living it. But I didn't necessarily um, head down the path of becoming um, a nutritionist till after college when I got Lyme disease um, and after doing a couple rounds of antibiotics, didn't really get to the bottom of it. Unfortunately, I kind of caught the symptoms late, about six months later than the actual tick bite. And so I was dealing with arthritic type symptoms. Um, and so then I, I just started studying herbs and I started studying nutrition and I moved to Ithaca to study herbal medicine. Um, and I would drive down Green Street all the time wondering about this radish on the side and like wondering what it was about. And when I like looked at the website and saw that it was all about like whole food nutrition and, what, and quoted the Weston A. Price Foundation, I was like, okay, I know I've found my people because I had been um, kind of already studying um, Nourishing Traditions cookbook and things like that. So I became a client of Tara's, you know, and within three months of being a client, I no longer had any um, of that severe bloating or the pain after eating. And I, um, you know, I had already transitioned off of birth control, but then the menstrual cramps came back. But after working with her, you know, that I no longer had menstrual cramps. And within time, um, you know, the Lyme symptoms came under control too. And so I went back to school to study nutrition. And as soon as I graduated with my master's degree, I was like, Tara, will you hand hire me? And yeah, you know, so Tara is um, the owner and founder of Nutritional Wellness Center. And I've been here ever since. So um, I'm excited. Um, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just someone commented on Facebook because we're recording this as Facebook Live just about how so many people are getting their periods at younger ages and how this is an ongoing problem with, um, with daughters. Yeah, and I just, yeah, it's part of why I'm here, why I'm sharing this information, why I'm so excited. It's such a turnout for folks to be able to share with their friends, their families, their daughters. Um, and so we're here to talk about hormones and hormone balance, right? And how to do it naturally. And so I wanted to really start because it's a confusing, really big topic. It's a pretty broad topic. I wanted to get into some more specifics and help folks um, have a better understanding and overview. So the hormonal system, a lot of people call it the endocrine system. Um, we have this kind of confusing looking chart in your packets, which is Power's chart for the endocrine um, organs. And so I'll be referring to that. But, but before we get into that, I really want you to think of your hormonal system as your body's planning committee. <laughs> so, you know, you've got, it's a group of glands 
and they all coordinate with each other, sending messages to each other to make hormones or to not make hormones, and um, and they really plan for long-term projection. You know, so it can be a part of plan preparing the body for pregnancy and conception and seeing you through that process. Um, but it can also be really short-term things, like um, gosh, yeah. A short, I think you like your immediate fight or flight stress response, right? That would be a short term example. Um, but, it, but as you observe, like it's a very interconnected system, so you can't just have one aspect of it healthy, all of it has to be healthy. And actually, your well being and your hormonal balance is dependent on each actor or each mem committee member, we should say, being um, happy. So a lot of folks, I have my list to refer to, and, and I'm going to be really a lot going off this handout that you guys have in here. So you can see over on this sheet, we've got hypothalamus right here in the top corner, right? And so the hypothalamus is a gland in your brain. A lot of people think of it as a like command central. It's where a lot of hormones are made and stored. And then that information is passed to the pituitary. And the pituitary is also a gland in the brain. And it's where more hormones are stored and then sent out. And you can see from there, it goes kind of nutty, right? Um, you have the thyroid right there in the middle because so many messages get to the thyroid and you can see that the thyroid is connected to everything else in this chart. Um, so here at the office, we work a lot on thyroid health, actually going back to the source, so hypothalamus support as well and pituitary support as well. Um, but it's intimately connected to your adrenals and the messages that get sent back and forth from there. And then of course the sex hormone, um, you know, your gonads, right? But a lot of people aren't aware that, you know, you have hormone receptors in duodenum, which is your, your gut, in the pancreas, um, in your liver, right? In the thymus, like your immune system is connected. And I don't want to get into too much detail or kind of overwhelm with that, um, information, but I just want you to sort of observe, like the solid lines are um, a, a one type of message and the dotted lines are another type of message, and just really take in what a complex system it is and, um, and realize that there's so many different aspects of what can go out of balance. And so it's, you know, it's not just that your adrenals aren't functioning or that you're hypothyroid or um, that you have blood sugar handling issues, you know, it's actually broader than that. And so what we do here is we do a whole body approach and a whole systems approach because it's about how all the organs talk to each other and actually how that interplays in, in getting a body healthy. Any questions about that? You know, just a, a, a general takeaway? Okay. So, a big thing I end up talking to people about in terms of balancing their hormones naturally is step number one, what can you do to reduce stress in your life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you know, you think, well, you're a nutrition office, you should be talking about what you're eating, right? But no, like these things tie into it. And um, stress reduction then will change up the pathways that the body can be stuck in. So you can be stuck in a similar um, hormone pathway. And if you um, take time to take a walk or change up your usual routine or incorporate whatever it is for you, if it's yoga, if it's meditation, um, that can be tremendous for, um, for a reset. Because we are not designed as humans to um, run, function in a state of um, high stress hormones. And in general, most of us do. You know, that, that system was designed for a quick response of adrenaline so that we can be running away from a tiger or like some kind of quick thing that has an end. But we live in a world now where these stressors are things that we refer to that they're, they're ongoing. And so then there's no end and there's no coming down from that, um, from that response and then the body doesn't switch back into a different mode. And so that long term can really cause, cause a lot of trouble in terms of how, how this, it all stays balanced. The second big thing is all about toxicity exposure. So I feel like I talk about that all day, every day, um, because it ties into you know why more and more girls are getting their periods at 11. It's about these exposures that are in our environment, they're in our cleaning products, they're in our beauty products, they're um, um, 
yeah, they're all around us. Some of we can control and some of which we can't. And these, um, these toxicities really are, they're, you know, another fancy term is endocrine disruptors, right? You know, I feel like you talk about that. They're talked about as plastics. Um, and what that means is it, in, it interferes with the functioning of the endocrine system, the hormonal system that we're talking about. So any step you can take to use a more natural cleaner or different detergents, um, you know, being aware of the work of the environmental working group who um, does some amazing work with um, rating personal care products and like they have a whole database where you can go and you can search these different personal care products and um, see how they rate, see whether they are rated highly for safety um, or not. And, and I feel like the environmental working group just does awesome work also just around children's health, and children toxic, toxicity exposure, um, uh, as well as you know personal care products and things like that. So if you haven't been to their website and they have um, they have a great app that you can then download on your phone and you can just um, take pictures of the barcodes, um, or they have a lot of information on their website. Uh, number three is eat fat. So we work a lot really hard here to re-educate people about how important fat is in your diet. And I'm gonna get into a little bit more detail about that with the, the biochemistry, slightly, I don't want to. But there's just been so much miseducation about fat and about cholesterol. And actually it's cholesterol that makes your sex hormones. So, you know, I was just looking at someone's blood work the other day and you know, they're now the markers are saying, well, it has to be under 199 to not be considered too high. And, um, you know, in the world of a clinical nutritionist, if you go under 160, which a lot of doctors are pushing because they have folks on statins, um, you get into a place where the body cannot actually make its hormones. It's having to choose between using that cholesterol to run certain pathways and make your sex hormones or not. And because it's not vital to life for us to reproduce, your body will not, it will not prioritize that pathway. And so it just prioritizes the other pathway, which um, ends up making more cortisol, and which contributes to more inflammation. And it just, it just feeds the cycle, right? And it feels, feeds the, um, the imbalance that's happening. So you need your cholesterol. Ideally, it should be around 220, actually. That's the perfect number to support hormonal balance. I can get, it could be a whole nother lecture about how these numbers get set and who dictates that. Um, uh, but, so please don't get worried if your cholesterol is over 200 and please do eat butter and eat coconut oil and eat eggs because they do um, nourish, they nourish the system. And I've had like awesome clinical results if I just, particularly um, younger women, if I have them like add coconut oil into their diet, like say they're not having regular menstrual cycles or have something even like polycystic ovarian syndrome, just adding the coconut oil back in and making it part of their routine can do tremendous amounts of just getting the body to get back into making the hormones itself. So yeah, ignore what they say about coconut oil. <laughs> there was just yet another article, I'm going on a bit of a rant here, but there's just yet another article like circulating around and it just brings up all the fear and it brings up all these old arguments against saturated fat that aren't, um, that aren't founded. All right, so enough about fat, except you should eat it. <laughs> and then a big thing is about veggies. So um, your veggies are an amazing source of your um, minerals, right? They're your fiber. You actually need a lot of fiber for your body to um, recycle your hormones and clear them out of the gut. Eating your vegetables, especially your green leafy vegetables, there's a huge part of liver health. And a lot of, I end up working on more on livers to support hormone balance than I actually do work on thyroids or hypothalamuses or things like that. Um, our liver is a big place where all these hormones are um, filtered and then cleaned out because the whole idea is your you know hormones that are circling circulating through the bloodstream need to be broken down and moved out of the body, um, and your liver does that. Your liver also plays a huge role in converting hormones. So a big issue with thyroids can be not about the actual thyroid hormones being released, but are they can be converted properly from T3 to T4 in the liver. So 
you need, yeah, it says in here, diet lacking in B vitamins, right? Cabbage, Brussels sprouts, eggs, garlic, onions, um, you know, lead to sluggish liver and sluggish bile flow. The fact that pe so many people are not eating good quality fats that we just talked about. So, you know, cholesterol, butter, um, extra virgin olive oil, flax oil, these are all examples of your healthier fats, but most processed foods, most restaurants, a lot of people are still cooking with canola oil or hydrogenated vegetable oils, um, and that just clogs that liver up. So that's another piece of um, why we have an epidemic of people struggling with their hormone balance, and it can be, be tied back to these, these simple changes. Um, and then a biggie is soy. So avoiding unfermented soy can be a big part of supporting hormonal balance. I mean, it's on the news a lot right now because of all the trade wars, right? And what's going on with soy in this country. But soy, um, we make a lot of it. We make so much of it, we don't know what to do with it. And we hide it in all sorts of things. So it's in a lot of processed foods. Um, it's put into soybean oil is just everywhere, right? It's in our salad dressings. Um, and and soy is um, estrogenic, and like so, meaning it's supporting um, estrogen in the body. But so many many of us are in a state where we actually have plenty of estrogen, and like, and so um, the soy contributes to the problem. Whereas unfermented, yeah, so fermented soy, at least like I'm talking about miso, or I'm talking about tempeh, um, and so that's at least easier to digest, right? Because it's um, been pre-digested by the fermentation process, so it doesn't seem to it doesn't have the same effects. And for most people, the m main issue with soy is just that it's hidden in so many things. So it's not that they're sitting down and eating lots and lots of tofu, um, but that they're getting it from these other sources that they're not aware of, and it's um, negatively impacting things. Any other questions so far in terms? like I'm talking kind of fast I apologize so if you need me to repeat anything or slow down I absolutely can so um, should you avoid all soy if I'm if I'm working with someone who is dealing say um, yeah with hot flashes or they're um, premenopausal into postmenopausal and and struggling then yes I, I just have them pull all soy out even fermented soy yeah um, until, until a better a better balance is happening, yeah. Um, but a thing I forgot to mention when I was kind of back in the beginning and talking about stress handling, I see such a correlation with um, women in that range that I was just talking about pre postmenopausal really struggling with hot flashes or struggling with that transition, and it actually tying back to um, how healthy their adrenal glands were heading into that transition, and so a lot of it has to do with rebuilding that organ and the whole stress handling piece that I was talking about in the beginning. So well, that might be interesting to you in terms of other conversations that we've had, but yeah. Um, all right, yeah, because I, I really truly believe and come from an operating basis that our bodies um, have the innate cap capacity to maintain hormone balance and to correct it. Um, but it comes down to like what's needed for that individual body and what's thrown the balance off. Um, and it, when given the correct support, the body can heal. And so really what it comes down to is like identifying what's the underlying cause, what's thrown the body out of balance. You know, is it a digestive piece? Is it a liver which would tie into digestive piece or is it something specific with a specific um, hormonal gland and um, getting to the bottom of it. And so with that in mind, I want to explain a little bit more about what I mean because a lot of you here are clients and you know what I mean by that in terms of um, getting information in the body about specific organs and then others don't. You know, you're kind of like, what does she mean? How can you find out what's the underlying balance? But um, in my experience, with doing this, um, you know, every person is unique, every body is unique, and that really anything can cause anything in the sense that I don't know what's causing one specific body to not regulate correctly, and it may not be the same as what's causing another body to regulate correctly, and there's not a one-size-fits-all, there's not just a, a magic bullet, yes, you have 
um, you know, you have bad menstrual cramps, well then you just need to take this, you know. It's, um, yeah, it's a simple point, but I feel like it's a really significant point. And that's why there's not like one diet that's right for the individual. It's why, you know, you have some people who are like, well, this was amazing for me and I got such amazing results with it. And the next person's like, I tried that and that didn't do anything for me. I do believe that there are underlying principles that do dictate what's considered a healthy diet and a nourishing diet. But then, you know, the, the nitty gritty of that comes down to that body, how, how it's been fed throughout its lifespan and actually how its parents ate and how its grandparents ate, things like that. So it's a really long-term perspective. But what's amazing about it is even though it's a long-term perspective, there's still absolutely immediate things that can be done and that can create change. Um, so behind me I have my little board. And this is where I was, and so, that first, I've got the other one first. <laughs> Thank you. So I chose to put like fatigue on the top of this because I feel like so many, there are so many symptoms of hormones not regulating correctly, but fatigue is a big one that I hear. Um, you know, just the description of what we put for this class, you know, unexplained weight loss or weight gain or, um, unexplainable fatigue, um, changes in nail quality or changes in skin quality, things like that, they all can be um, indicative of poor hormone balance. But behind me, and I apologize to folks who are on the periphery, and I can kind of rotate it if, if you want, we've got a triangle here, right? Fatigue at the top, organ dysfunction, nutritional deficiency, right? So fatigue at the top, organ dysfunction, nutritional deficiency. And it ties into the, and I'll be explaining more what I mean, but this idea of anything can cause anything. Um, but you see with the triangle, you know, a triangle, everything is interconnected. And what I've found is that in every occurrence of fatigue or just overall hormone imbalance that someone's dealing with, that body has specific organ dysfunction, it has specific nutritional deficiencies. And what is needed is, and is tying into what I was saying before, is um, that we have to identify what's going on for that ad a specific body to be able to begin to rebuild and repair. And so the idea, and I'm sorry, I feel awkward because I've got this camera right here and then you guys on the other side, so I I'll keep moving around. <laughs> um, but the idea with a triangle is that if you throw off one corner, then you're throwing off the other two corners as well. And I know some of you, have, you know, you've heard this talk and you kind of have seen this before, but I, I feel like it's a really important point to, that I keep reiterating um, because the idea is that if you have an organ that's not functioning properly then you're already going to have nutritional deficiencies and if you have nutritional deficiencies that's going to cause further organ dysfunction and um, you know so if you have any kind of a symptom these things are already occurring and what's unfortunate is that like because they're so interconnected that it causes a vicious cycle and it causes the body to become more nutrient deficient which causes it to function less and less optimally, which makes you more and more symptomatic. And so the idea is um, where do we put a halt in this, you know, how, how do you stop it? And at the best case, stop it, but even better than that, once it's stabilized, how do you rebuild and how do you repair? And so, um, and what I find, it comes down to ident identifying what organs are struggling and what they need and giving it to them, and then the, po the process can start to be reversed. So as a fun exercise, in your packets you all have a little quiz. I think you mostly all have something to write with, hopefully. If you don't, we can pass some things around. We don't, unfortunately. Do we have two more packets? We're going to make some for you guys. Three more. Three more packets, all right. Four? Do you need a packet too, Gretchen? Okay, all right. Four quizzes, it's awesome. Thanks for hanging out back there without a proper seat. Sorry we ran out of chairs. <laughs> it's a good problem to have, right? <laughs> so I just want you guys to take a minute, you know, answer the sugar quiz, just placate me. <laughs>
peanut butter can be different. Yeah. No, not too good. Everyone doing? Everybody done at this point? Not quite. It's about. No. Wait a minute longer. Yeah. All right. Well, so count up your falses. That's the idea with this: is you count up your falses. And then did anybody answer false to four or more questions? Yeah, and if you did, yeah, yeah, you do. So, you know, so that's important. It's, it's really important because if you take this board and you take away the word P, what do I do with it? Ah, there it is. And we put up sugar, right? Everyone on this side, everyone on this side. Um, it's really important because sugar causes the exact same mechanisms as the symptoms do, right? So sugar causes nutritional deficiencies, sugar causes organ dysfunction. We need to be willing to admit that at least some of our current health situation is caused by our dietary habits. Um, and so on the other side of that sheet, the sugar quiz, um, there is 147 reasons why I encourage you to stop eating sugar. Um, you know, on here, what's one, uh, one that stuck out to me? Number 94, sugar can exacerbate PMS. So, gosh, I see that a lot in clinical practice. Like, you know, with women where I'm working on hormonal balance and we're paying attention to how each cycle is going. And it's kind of a monthly observation. And like one month, a person struggles with sugar. Gosh, then that next period can be horrific, you know, or if they're prone to getting migraines before their period. Um, that's when it will happen, or if they ha they'll have more cramps or not. So, um, yeah, really um, analyzing one's diet for sugar is, is significant. Um, and just, I encourage you to spend some time, take a highlighter, highlight ones that you feel like are relevant to you, and, and reach for it when you're being tempted. <laughs> um, yeah, because there's even if you know even if you're not struggling with hormone balance, like there's so many reasons on here um, to motivate you to to really work on that. Um, yeah, because we all you know we all want to be dealing with healthy hormone balance, right? We all want to be aging with it all well. It can just lead to so so many symptoms and so much struggle that is, from my opinion, really unnecessary. Um, and so, I just, with that kind of depressing outlook with it, I do really want to offer hope. <laughs> and how I hope is using, or how I hope and help, <laughs> is using a system called nutrition response testing. And my thing's gonna collapse here, folks. So just those of you who aren't aware of it, and even those of you who are clients, I feel like this is just a great way for you to understand better how it works. Um, and, really understand what's happening in your appointments. But it, this system really allows me to assess how the body is currently functioning and then how we can help, how we can help it to do better. And so I've got Cindy over here. Cindy's our associate practitioner and she is going to help me do a little quick demonstration. But the first thing I need you to understand with Cindy standing her, you know, her body has a certain amount of energy that it's giving off and she's healthy. So when I ask her to put out her arm and to match my pressure, she's able to do that. But let's um, say that we throw Cindy in a lake, right? And she's dealing with hypothermia, right? So the idea behind hypothermia is the body prioritizes and it needs to keep the core alive, needs to keep you warm and, and your heart beating and functioning. And so it draws energy from the periphery, from your fingers, from your toes. And the same concept is in play with nutrition response testing. So the idea is if I have Cindy and I'm asking her to match my pressure, and say I come and I touch her thyroid and I kind of irritate it and I'm putting pressure on it, and there, there is some kind of underlying struggle with the thyroid. You know, it's, it's got toxicity issues it's dealing with, oh gosh, it's not happy with how that body is eating, or it's under functioning and actually needs targeted nutrition to repair itself. If I'm putting that pressure and the body says, oh gosh, I gotta protect that thyroid, the arm response will change and thus the, the arm will go down. 
And so um, in a very kind of simple explanation of it, we then offer the body different support, you know, offer it different whole foods. And the idea is that, you know, these are, these are living foods in glass in just the same way that you, know, you can put your hand in a window pane and feel the heat from the sun that's really far away. I can put the food on the body and it can pick up the energy from it. And if it's helpful and reparative and restorative energy, then when I go back and I touch the thyroid, the body's gonna sense, oh, I have what I need to take care of that. So I don't need to stress out and worry about it and the arm response will lock again. But I, you know, I can offer the body many things and if I offer something that's not the right thing and isn't going to help it to heal and repair, then the response will stay um, with her arm going down and showing what I call is like a stress response. And so that's how we customize it and build it for the individual. And so while clients here will all be taking supplements, no one's taking the exact same thing. Um, it's an individualized program. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate that. Um, you know, it's called Design Clinical Nutrition, and that's why this is listed here. And it's a little bit like the idea that we are all wearing black button-down suits, but everyone's inseams, everyone's lengths are all custom to them. Um, and the biggest thing is determining whether or not you're a nutrition response testing case. Not everybody is, but if you are, I really truly believe that nothing will help you as much. And so that's why I encourage folks who aren't clients here tonight, there's a health screening form as part of your packet. You can fill that out, happy, Cindy and I are happy to do what we call a health screening and just give you an assessment and see whether or not you benefit from this work. So, because you have to keep in mind, and this is keeping in mind for new clients as well as old clients, what we're working on is we're working on your overall health, right? You know, you could come in being like, well, my hot flashes are just driving me nuts. And I'm like, yep, well, we're gonna work on that liver and we're gonna be repairing those um, digestive function and so it's like hang in there I know it's a long-term process but it is about restoring overall health and under overall optimal function of how things are going um, it's totally safe natural you know you can be on medications you can be um, taking other things but um, you know we have babies as clients and I, my oldest client is 95 so it's just an incredible range of how of where we can support the body where you are in life um, but you have to be open and willing to try something a little different, right? And be willing to um, work slowly at your diet. Um, and so I'm excited as a part of tonight because I, talking about my approach and like what I do and how I support hormones, I also invited Sean here from Nature's Pharmacy to talk about what he does because um, it's really wonderful as having another tool to support the body with, um, you know, medications that are based made out of herbs, or and he's going to go more into it to actually explain what that means and and what that can con contribute. Because so many of us are in a situation where um, you're already on a medication to support hormone balance, or um, or, or I have clients who are just really struggling through, through certain transitions, even though they're changing their diet and working at it. Um, there, there is a place and there are options for folks who want to do it with a more um, natural focus. So I'm going to pass the stage over to Sean. All Hi, I'm Sean from Nature's Apothecary, the compounding pharmacy right around the corner. And uh, a lot of people might have heard what compounding pharmacies, might not know what it is, but to, an introduction about myself is a compounding pharmacy basically customized medications for people, whether it be a different dosage, different way of using it. Uh, compounding pharmacists can come up with a solution. And what made me <clears throat> go towards compounding pharmacy, or uh, be that route, is the fact that I was working retail and I just, I, w I saw people were not really getting the relief that they needed and it just took a toll on me. So I wanted to make a change in people's lives. So I looked up into compounding and I decided that's where my calling is. As far as uh, what different areas that I can do, uh, I can do things for, I'm working with kids with autism, 
I'm working with pain management, veterinary use, and as Sophie mentioned, a lot of bioidentical hormones. A lot of people might have heard about all, all there's a couple different forms of hormones, whether it be synthetic, uh, natural, or bioidentical, and I'll go into a little detail on all, all three. Something like a synthetic hormone would be uh, derived from pregnant uh, farm animals such as horses or cows. And so what the, what the company will do is basically add a structure to the compound, uh, add a structure to the chemical, so that way they can get a patent on it, which in turn might not work as like uh, bioidenticals would. Uh, then there's natural hormone replacement therapies such as like herbs and soy as Sophie was mentioned. And then what my, fun my focus is is bioidenticals where basically they're matching what's uh, identical to what's in the body. And a lot of people might have heard about hormone replacement therapy being kind of causing cancer and higher risk of cancer. And generally with bioidentical, the risk is actually subsided and it actually can be a preventative measure versus something using like a synthetic like Premarin or something similar to that line. And the reason is just because the, the body can't respond to the, how the, the change in structure. So in turn, it can wreak havoc when something like a bioidentical was the right thing. <clears throat> as far as how do I come up with a formula for a patient is basically, I have a saliva testing that uh, allows the patient to give a saliva sample four times a day, and then turn that paints a better picture than uh, something like a blood draw where it's just one time, you know, whether the there's any fluctuation with our hormones, it's just gonna pick up that level. So basically, if someone had a high level that day, then their level, their whole reading is going to be high. So in turn, they're not really going to get the benefit they need. Where with a saliva test kit, it's four times a day, in the morning and before lunch, dinner, and before bedtime. And that actually helps give a better average of what's going on. So in turn, the person's going to get more relief for it. <clears throat> a couple of different hormones that are I see every day is uh, estrogens such as estriol, estradiol, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA, and estradiol, estriol, and I think I said that one. <laughs> and I'll go into a little detail as far as which what one does what. The estriol or estradiol and is an estrogen, which estrogen helps with vaginal lubrication, uh, thickens the vaginal walls, um, and then and it, as a negative thing, it can increase fat storage. So in turn, someone if their levels are their estrogen is too high, it might be causing extra uh, fat to be stored. For a lot of complaints I get with uh, compounding is a lot of women experience vaginal dryness, uh, burning, itching, all those symptoms. And one thing to combat that is I would use something like an estriol cream that's going to help supplement that and in turn provide uh, extra lubrication for the women. With the and coming up with a compound cream, I can do different forms. I can do creams, uh, lozenges, um, suppositories, all sorts of things versus something commercially, it's just one strength and that's it. I can come up with a custom strength, a combination of medications that work on all the symptoms so they don't have to take multiple medications. And generally, the bases that I have are actually a lot easier, a lot better for a patient because, for instance, one of the bases I can use promotes adherence to the vaginal lining. So in turn, it's gonna stay, the medication's gonna stay intact longer. It's gonna provide extra moisture. And overall, the patient's gonna be a lot more satisfied than taking something that's just available with no, uh, you know, 
it's kind of like a one size fits all doesn't work with me it's customized per patient's need another in, another ingredient that i use is estradiol which it's beneficial for people with uh, hot flashes as well as promotes cerebral cerebral blood flow and in turn it kind of helps with memory as well estriol versus estradiol is estriol it's a uh, considered a weaker hormone and in turn that's the one that can be used and competitive uh, against uh, cancer different types of cancer related to hormones then the next one is progesterone uh, progesterone uh, as women age f after 35 their progesterone levels decrease and uh, progesterone can be linked to migraine headaches. It can help uh, fight fat uh, by using it as energy. Fatil uh, facilitates the thyroid function, promotes normal sleep, and then helps restore normal libido. I actually, it can help with uh, any uh, PMS pains or anything like that. I had a 14 year old who was in extreme pain every time she had her cycle and so we got talking and I came up with a progesterone capsule for her that's a lower strength than what she would get available and in turn that's helped all her symptoms subside every uh, I think she was taking it every 10 days or 14 days uh, I have to go out back and check but with that it helped her replace the progesterone that she was losing in her body and so in turn it helped her sleep it helped with all the cramping bloating everything that uh she was experiencing progesterone is uh produced in the adrenal glands and it uh can help with when the progesterone levels are out of, out of whack it can help with uh cause a lot of fatigue and inflammation so in turn people aren't getting good night's sleep where taking it by mouth it actually induces sleep so a lot of women who can't are having trouble or difficulty sleeping and they don't want to take something like Ambien or any other controlled drug like that they can their progesterone levels might be off and in turn it's going to help them actually sleep and get a good night's rest it also acts as a natural diuretic another medication is uh, DHEA which helps decrease the cortisol levels promotes weight loss and increases brain function it also helps to decrease cortisol levels as well uh, it can be used as when people are experiencing sexual dysfunction and uh, kind of helps promote like that increased libido Another medication would be something like testosterone, which uh, a lot of women don't realize, but all, everyone has testosterone in their bodies. Uh, testosterone can be used for weight loss, increased libido, uh, bone density, body mass, helps with, uh, keeps everything maintained like that. And so a lot of uh, women I experience in, or they've been having a lot of like brain fog that I would come up with a certain dose, like uh, two milligrams per ml. So that way they can use that and uh, instead of having to take other supplements. I found one lady, she, we tried one dose, it was working, but she was just experiencing still a lot of brain fog. And then we took, I increased the dose a little bit with the doctor and she said her symptom, her brain fog went away completely. Actually, just based off that. <clears throat> Combination, uh, something like estradiol, testosterone, uh, would be really beneficial as they both help with memory. I actually have an aunt that uh, I've been talking with about hormones and higher levels. She can't, they can't figure out what's going on I told her to have her levels checked just because of she's in her mid-60s and 
Uh, doctors can't find out or figure out what's going on. So I told her, you know, try that and see. And so I've been working with her, coming up with a game plan as far as getting her memory back and getting her, giving her more energy with the kids and all. I've included a evaluation sheet that kind of helps talk about all sorts of hormone or the symptoms, what can what one might be experiencing, and ways to combat that. If someone was a, if someone was experiencing some vaginal dryness and they didn't want to use a hormone cream, I could make them a cream such as hyaluric acid, vitamin E, and vitamin A to kind of help promote the natural lubrication and all uh, any uh, soothe any discomfort that they may have. Uh, the hyaluric acid helps to regenerate the uh, cell tissue. Uh, the vitamin E kind of helps to promote healing and then vitamin A helps supplement uh, the endothelial cells. So they all work in conjunction with that specialized base that uh, pr promote uh, or help with the vaginal dryness. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. The arrows pointing up and down, does that mean that there's an abundance of it or that there's a need for more of it? Oh, uh, was there one you were looking for in particular? Well, I'm just looking at the first one, like fibrosis thick breast, yep. there's a high E and a low T. Does that mean that you can assume that estrogen is very high and my progesterone is low? Or that you would, backwards, that you would need to create something to no, it would be uh, you'd be high a uh, high estrogen, low progesterone. So in turn, I'd create something. I'd, I'd probably be more like a progesterone cream that's going to offset the estrogen dominance. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thank you. So what if you had multiple things that are sort of opposite of each other? Yeah. Um, as I, that's a good question. I always look at. I always like to recommend like the saliva testing. That way. If something can, it can be high, too high or too low, uh, saliva testing is going to actually show like, okay, you might be this, so in turn it's kind of going to give a better tool than mm -hmm. this, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then a lot, another thing uh, a lot of women experience is uh, like sexual dysfunction due to the fact that their body's not producing the hormones, so in turn anything can be painful. So I have one cream actually, it's similar to Viagra, it's the same medication that kind of promotes blood flow. And in turn, that's gonna help with uh, stimulation and help the lady reach a climax. Do you guys have any questions so far? Uh, as, as far as like having side effects, it would be kind of, it can, your body can, if you have too much hormones, it can do the opposite and kind of, you know, have a negative effect where that's why I always start low and go work the way up. But in a negative effect, it could be, you know, having hot flashes when you weren't, when someone wasn't experiencing hot flashes just because there's too much estrogen uh, going in the body where generally... I haven't, I haven't really seen any side effects as far as that, um, just because starting slower with the saliva test, coming up with a formula or playing a game plan like that to for everything to subside. Um, trying to think uh, as far as it's kind of it's kind of tough because. You know, there's no every person's different so one person might be experiencing you know a symptom at one strength where other people will be fine with that so that's why starting slow and working your way up kind of uh, works the best usually when I dispense a uh, hormone it would be in uh, syringes so people can kind of titrate that way if they feel like they're experiencing hot flashes then they can decrease a little bit and then they don't have to worry about that. Somebody had a question on Facebook about the creams you just talked about. Um, 
which cream? The one that you talked about last. Oh, the uh, for vaginal dryness. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, it's a, a cream with combination of uh, hyaluric acid, vitamin E, and vitamin A. And when I use the cream, I put it in something that's gonna adhere to the vaginal lining, so it, in turn it's gonna stay intact longer, and and uh, provide more relief for the patient versus just like a regular cream uh, with those. They're gonna work well, but using that base, it's kind of a in a, in a sense like a secret base just because it's proprietary through my one wholesaler and I just started using it just because of that aspect of it. I've, I've made like a mix between 50-50 uh, with the two different bases and the relief that the people got from the base uh, was said that it was a lot higher than just the regular, regular cream. Besides the testosterone, is there any of these other hormonal creams that must have a prescription from a doctor? Yep, all the everything that goes through a compounding pharmacy would need a prescription. I know some women, I know some places do offer progesterone online, um, but as far as uh, it would be worth getting a prescription for, just because of where the compounding pharmacy, especially mine, I get I only get the top quality products. So if someone was using a progesterone cream from one place versus a progesterone cream from mine, I know the size of the particles every single time, and that's going to help. That's going to cause uh, it's going to cause the medication to be driven into the body even more, or if it's not if not enough. So I had one one lady who was went to one pharmacy and they must have been using a cheaper quality product and. I gave I made a cream using my base, which was designed specifically for uh, to penetrate the body, and she actually had to reduce the the ba or had to reduce the medication just because you know the the how it was being administered, everything was the same, the same strength and all, but just the particle size of the the medications that I use are different than what the other place was. So I have a follow up to that. Although you may not be able to share names. Are there physicians here in Ithaca that actually prescribe bioidentical hormones? Yeah, no, um, uh, Paula Fitzsimmons, she does. Uh, another one is uh, Dr. Uh, McCauley in Trumansburg. Um, Dr. O'Shea is another one. Um, I work a lot more with like uh, Dr. McCauley and Dr. O'Shea. Uh, they usually Anytime they have a question, they send me a text. Hey, I have this. How can we combat that? So, I had uh, my doctor with one of the doctors down in the My thought process is kind of like the blood work is kind of more of an old school like training where saliva testing is more new school in a sense. Um, I offer saliva testing at my shop. You can come in, you can get it, and basically how I have it set up is you just you just get the kit and then you submit all the paperwork to the company, and then they send me the results, and in turn I can share it with your doctor as well. Mm -hmm. So that way it, we're all working in conjunction with each other, not like, oh, there's that or there. Yeah. Do you always have to have a prescription for the test? Nope, not, uh, you don't need a prescription for a saliva testing, actually. But you need to get these things. Oh, yeah, but what I do when I see the results, I'll call the doctor and be like, you know, doctor, I she so-and-so had this test. Here are her levels. Here's what I recommend. You know, that way... A lot of it comes down to educating the doctors too. You know, it's kind of a, a new school thought. Even though all the medications were basically compounded before the mass manufacturing, so more and more doctors are coming around to they see the benefit of it. Sure. Um, two questions. One, um, can one get insurance reimbursement? Yep, that's a good question. I. Uh, how I set up, I don't take insurance, but I give you a form to submit the insurance. 
So instead of them reimbursing me in like two months, three months, they reimburse the patient like two weeks. It all depends really on every insurance company. You know, it's it all. Uh, some do, some don't. I have a handful that's probably fifty fifty. All my prices are pretty competitive from all the pla all the pharmacies that I've uh, kind of called around with, and uh, I always want a price match too, just because I take that into consideration. So I want people to be able to afford the medication because if if they can't afford it, what good am I to have a pharmacy? My second question was. Um, you work with medical marijuana at all? I don't, uh, I don't do anything with medical marijuana just because of, uh, at the time it was, it was like a $200,000 fee for <laughs> like the application. Oh. But I do offer uh, what's called full spectrum uh, hemp oil or CBD oil. And the one that I have in stock actually helps, has, uh, works on adrenals. It calms the adrenals, works on inflammation, promotes peaceful sleep. Uh, helps with anxiety, depression. I can name like 80 different things for it. And uh, so I have two forms of, that I sell. I also carry a salve too that works. It's more, more for uh, pain, but uh, the oral solution works really well for uh, a bunch of symptoms. So. Does, that, does that need a prescription? Nope, it's just... Uh, over the counter, they consider it an herbal supplement. And how it is with uh, New York, or actually the US, with full spectrum, it can have a slight amount of THC in it, but it's not anything that's gonna be psychoactive. It's just enough to work in conjunction with regular, with the CBD. And the one so one thing, the one that I have in stock, it's, um, well, it has added terpenes, and terpenes basically help the medication pass the blood-brain barrier easier. And so in turn, that it's gonna make the CBD oil work even better. actually never even thought of that. I mean, something like that could be possible. Um, it just, I never really worked outside, you know, for like the, um, the testing or anything like that. Um, but I would, uh, I'd have no problem doing it. As long, are you talking like a cream or something? Yeah, anything you prescribe just for, I, I know I am a client here and my body's been through very similar things and therapy. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I'll respond. So officially for the record, we do not muscle test medications. Well, that answers that question. <laughs> that's that's the reason why we don't I've never done it just because we're not. <laughs> I have another question. Sure. Um, do you compound thyroid medication? And if so, how do you feel it works? compared to armor thyroid? Uh, I do compound, I have a couple different forms. I have more of a synthetic one, which is just pure uh, levothyroxine, uh, lyothyronine, and I have one that's actually desiccated porcine thyroid, which is similar to what is on recall right now, actually, and it's, uh, but I have it, I get a everything pure powder medication, so I can do any strength if it was, you know, 72 milligrams, for instance, I could do that versus what uh, what's available. Um, so similar starting material as like Armour Thyroid, but just a different form of it. I know this is mainly about women, but men also have hormone issues, mm -hmm. yes. And um, same things apply with that? Yep, uh, same thing. Uh, I'm actually working with an uh, older gentleman. He's about 84 and I'm making a um, uh, testosterone cream just to supplement it. Um, some women, or some, <laughs> some men with uh, even like erectile dysfunction, I can make them um, kind of a couple of medication, combination medications, so work similar to Viagra. Uh, I always recommend someone that if they're going for like Viagra to actually be tested for their testosterone. Just because guys, our testosterone levels drop when we're like, started when we're in our 30s. 
you know, just continuously drop. So a lot of these people that are a lot of these men that have like erectile dysfunction and all should be probably taking testosterone and in turn it's not gonna you know, have that same effect as without it. Um, and, and it's the same thing as it's the same test. It's just on the test is basically you know oh it's testosterone levels versus someone's estrogen and progesterone levels. So, um, and with bioidenticals, it's a lot safer than something like, uh, something safer than just like what's available commercially, just because it's mimicking what's in our body versus something that similar to it, but it's not exactly the same thing. Nope, uh, the, you don't need a prescription. Uh, that's what I was explaining over here. Everything, uh, basically how I have it set up is you just pick up the saliva test from my shop and then you do the samples, send them into the, the lab. I get the results, no prescriptions needed. And then I can send the results to your doctor as well. And then... Um, how much does the kit cost in the testing? Usually the testing for the, it tests for five, di five different hormones. Uh -huh. Uh, it tests for progesterone, estrogen, DHEA, testosterone, and it uh, tests cortisol too. And for a five panel testing, it's $130 right to the uh, ZRT labs. And they offer um, a couple other testing too. As you could do like a couple samples, have that, and then the price goes up. But for that basic one, it's uh, $130. Okay. And then, That's less than blood work. Oh yeah, blood yeah, work, so. and uh, and they more, actually more offer. Reliable, so. Oh yeah. yeah, and they actually offer. Uh, they have a form for the people to submit with their insurance too, mm -hmm. so um, that way it kind of gives them bo both options really. And how much would you say on average is each uh, individual cream? Uh, cream the for month supply on most hormone therapy it's. Uh, about thirty nine seventy five, roughly starting out. I think I have one patient that's on a, a like a couple different things, like six different uh, ingredients in there, and they're like forty four. Um, so I, it, it'd be like a month supply, yeah. And that's pretty much y'all. If someone wanted a cream or a lozenge, a suppository, it's all going to be roughly around the same price. I'm always willing to work with people too on pricing just because, you know, I want them to be able to get the relief. So that's my passion. The paycheck will come next. So, okay. Go ahead. Oh, you said that it's the slide of the five panels. Are there any like, uh, more complex panels? or? Just... Yeah, there's different ones through the, the labs, but in New York State, as a pharmacist, they can only have certain ones. So I'm sure if someone called and um, sometimes there's stipulations like, oh, you can't do it in New York State, but some people send it out from like Pennsylvania, for instance, and they can't do nothing about it. So I think if you call them, they could probably explain a little bit more as far as, you know, what their procedure is on what states can, they can accept and all. But I'm pretty sure if, if you just call them and ask for a kit, they would probably help you out. But. Sure. Um, about the base for your vaginal cream, is it um, like do you have non toxic ingredients in there, or like how safe are those? Uh, well, all the creams that I use are actually for um, hormone replacement therapy. It's it's all been tested. I do have more of a natural base versus like some. I don't have the ingredient list with me right now, but I do have one that's all just like plant derivatives, and some women choose that. Other women, you know, they're okay with the regular cream too. So, and also your cannabis oil. About what's your price point for your oils? I sell a couple different ones. I have Charlotte's Web, which is a little bit more pricey. Um, Everyday Plus Charlotte's Web, a hundred mils online. It's a hundred eighty nine, and I'm selling it for a hundred fifty. Uh, then I have the thirty mls, which is just a hemp oil. That one's like uh, 35 and then 
I have the one with the added terpenes is more local, and that one's uh, usually 35, but I've been letting people try for 25. So I've been using both of them hand in hand, and I can't tell the difference, but I know both of them are working really well, so. And I'm actually in the process of working with someone else about, we're coming up with our own uh, product line. So we're gonna be in the next like couple months having our own uh, creams, um, the oils, a bunch of other things that I don't want to go into too much detail, but <laughs> a lot different than what's out there. So I figured might as well utilize the tools that I have, so. Oh yeah, removing a lot of these psychoactive ingredients, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as far as the psychoactive, uh, the amount that would be in there would be like this much comparable to like something like that if someone was using like the actual plant material. So it's such a small amount that it's not really gonna actually show up or it shouldn't show up as far as like any testing or anything like that. I'm doing a study with uh, someone that's really close to me about he uh, never tried any CBD oil or anything like that. So I just wanna see like, just to be sure, like if he tried for 30 days will anything happen but so far it seems like it's been uh, pretty clear so any other questions what's the what uh generally um the one that I've taken, they told me just to put it in the in the refrigerator while the other tests are doing it. But I was uh, talking with someone, one of my patients, and she was down in uh, someplace tropical on vacation. And they told her, you know, don't even worry about it because you're mailing it right to them, and they're actually, you know, it's not being refrigerated or anything like that. So it's fairly stable. Like, once you get the sample, you just don't want to do anything like eat or drink beforehand just because that can skew the, the results. So the saliva, as long as you have to put a big, like a decent amount in each vial, so it's not like it's gonna dry up or anything like that. So, so that's why actually Yeah, you, have, you get one that's uh, bigger and then like a couple smaller ones for the different samples. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do uh, free consultations uh, as far as everything, you know, that way I like to the, I like to make sure the patient understands everything going on and then we can come up with a solution that way. So uh, anytime, uh, feel free to give me a call or stop in. Um, there's free 15 minute parking in front of my store actually, so I always tell people that. But. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. Yeah, all Sean's contact information is right there. You guys got his business cards. You got Nature's Apothecary's contact info. And for sure, if questions come up, he's so available. It's really great. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, tell everyone anytime the lights are on, the door is open. So <laughs> yeah. I'm there from. I have posted hours, but I'm there long past that most of the times. Yeah, and we have a lot of experience. I mean, just like work with clients on all. As I was saying earlier, on all kinds of medications. A lot of clients on bioidentical hormones. So. You know, if any questions are coming up as you're thinking over this information, we can help be an in-between point. Those of you who are clients, just help you to understand everything that he's talking about, whether it's relevant for you. Yeah. yeah. Be happy to. Anytime. Yeah. Thanks so much, everyone. Anytime. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Yeah.